Zaxby's has been perfecting chicken fingers for 30 years. So what now? Now, we go to the sea! Introducing the Southern Fried Shrimp Meal with butterfly shrimp that's perfectly golden fried. A perfect blend of cocktail sauce and Zax sauce that we call Zach's tail sauce. Plus perfectly seasoned crinkle fries, perfectly buttery Texas toast, and even a drink with perfectly pebbled ice. Here's to 30 more years of perfect. The new Southern Fried Shrimp Meal at Zaxby's. Woo, saucy! Zaxby's. Well, look I, at that. I think so I'd we, we both insulted our mothers this podcast. <laughs> Hurrah! Hey, y'all, you're listening to the Denton Rules Yellowstone podcast. I'm here with my always eager to talk about Yellowstone and now Bass Reeves, Mr. Billy Dukes. <laughs> Billy, we're covering today episodes seven and eight. We got two episodes of Yellowstone to go through up at the top of this episode. So let me know and let all of the people know what is the most important thing that we should take away from this episode. There's really just one thing that Beth Dutton scene, end of episode oh. seven. And I've well, teased it. I told you it was coming. Addison, I want your reaction. Was it as advertised? How did you respond to that? You let me know. You even Slack messaged me yesterday or whenever going like, hey, prepare. It's at the end of episode seven. So thankfully, I was like emotionally, mentally, visually prepared for what was about to happen. Oh, it made my stomach turn. It was very bloody. It was. That's my reaction. It was difficult to watch the second time as well. Mm -hmm. And. Um, I want to get to a point about how CBS handled this particular scene in just a moment here, but to sort of recap the scene, um, it's a, an office scene. Beth's at the office, and Malcolm Beck of the Beck Brothers has sent two henchmen to, I think, kill her, but they want to torture her a little bit first. And they do. They really do. She knows, she sees them coming, so she's able to stab them a couple of times. Uh, she's also able to get a text off to Rip that says, office, help. So Rip is able to uh, be alerted to that. Almost right off the bat, they kill her assistant, Jason. And, and then she's beaten and brutalized. I mean, she, she has black eye. One eye is puffy and closed. It looks like the one guy is getting ready to rape her right before Rip intervenes. Um, and then she sort of breaks down and loses it and rips arms. And there's that graphic violence scene. But it's all in the context of this whole episode that up until that point was really soft and sensitive and loving. And it's just sort of did this 180 that in a lot of ways is poetic and it's definitely what Yellowstone does really well. Oh, it was very soft at the beginning. I mean, we see Tate having sweet moments with Rip, which who would have thought of that? And, you know, Casey and John, and that's where we find out how Lucky, Tate's horse, comes into the yeah. picture. Tate's horse, Lucky, who we actually talked about a few episodes ago, uh, the – the I don't know what the real life horse's name is, but Lucky, the horse, was having some health issues, which thankfully the horse is okay. But it was fun as someone who had no clue where Tate's horse originated from. This was an episode where we we kind of figured that one out. The heart of this episode to me is, I mean, this is really where the Beth and Rip story, their love story sort of, yes. to, sort of begins to congeal and they come together. They Over the last, I think, five or six, maybe more episodes, we've seen... Beth sort of mature with her love for Rip and realize that Rip is her man. And, it, and it's done really subtly. Like she never sort of has this epiphany that we see on screen. You just sort of start to see drops of it. But then she calls him to the roof of the house and they have a moment. And, and Beth, uh, Rip's ready to say, I love you. And she says, hold it. Tell me when it matters. Tell me when it's going to save me. Uh, and he certainly does do both of those things a little bit later <laughs> yeah. on in the episode. What I thought was interesting about that roof scene is she was asking, you know, where are you putting all your money, Rip? You know, where'd all your money go? What are you putting yeah. it towards? And that's where we found out that he put uh, his money towards, he literally spent tens of thousands of dollars to his mother's and brother's headstones that, yeah. you know, he wanted them super tall. So they were almost touching the heaven and that he paid a grave digger to uproot his father's bones. And he tossed them out the window on the drive to North Dakota. This actually isn't going to be the last time that Rip digs up a relative. Uh, oh, really? To, to retrieve the bones. Nope. It, it's coming again in uh, another season or two. I can't recall exactly when, but just a little foreshadowing there that he's 
He knows a guy who knows a guy who does these kind of things. <laughs> is he digging up his family members or? Yeah. Interesting. What? Is... Yep. Such an odd, uh, you know, person to have on speed dial. <laughs> that's, yes. It's not yeah, one of my uh, one. speed dial options. <laughs> <laughs> you got your mechanic, you got your lawyer, and you got your grave digger. They're all right there. One, two, three on the speed dial. <laughs> I do think that was a really sweet I, – I, I liked that moment. I think those are – so my two favorites to take away were – was that moment with Beth and then the Rip and Tate scene in the beginning. Just because I love seeing – and it's something that I recognize that I really enjoy seeing Rip, seeing a more soft side of him because I also said that if you remember in season five – when Carter enters the picture and I liked seeing kind of him interact with Rip, but then him also obviously interact with Beth. I saw, I thought that was really fun, but yeah, I think those were my two, two favorite. And Monica is just kind of getting on my nerves in this episode, but what's new? Well, I, I want to talk about Monica in a minute, but there was another moment at the end of episode eight where Rip and Tate are having another moment uh, around the horses. And that's when Beth's almost getting a little misty. Like you can see her start to get a bit emotional and immediately she goes after Jamie and says that if he ever falls in love, I can't wait to take that from you. And her response to watching Rip and Tate in that moment, I think, is very telling of what's to come as well. At this point in the show, we don't know why she's so emotional fully, <laughs> but we're soon going to find out. Interesting, which obviously I know. Having you know. watched. The, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> but yeah, that that is... Save it for I, some people. other reason. I didn't remember that Tate. See, I know I, I'm not giving it anyway. Don't don't you worry, Billy. I'm not. I'm I'm closing my mouth. I'm just I'm processing. Is what I'm doing. The Beck brothers kind of teed up that this was coming. They kind of let everybody know that they were coming after the family in some pretty obvious ways. I mean, they had a meeting with Beth at her office. The one brother did Malcolm um, hours, if not days, prior, where he more or less said, "I'm I'm, I'm coming for you." And Beth knew it, mm. and she told John that they had revenge on the mind. Um, but they were kind of on a rampage here. I mean, they killed the one guy, the, the the gambler or the dealer at Tom Rainwater's casino, the guy with one right. missing a finger. They kill him. They s- Missing a finger? Oh, the one missing a finger. I was like, wait, they chopped off his whole hand. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they uh, they took Dan Jenkins' liquor license, and then they uh-huh. go after Beth. And then throughout the episodes, they keep referring to – going after the one that John Dutton loves most, who we are led to believe is Tate. Yeah, Tate. Tate could be in their crosshairs at this point, which is, you know, gulp. Dun, 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 dun. Mm-hmm. So uh, <laughs> I didn't watch, and we've said this kind of from the beginning of, of kind of recapping these Yellowstones on CBS, is we are watching the Peacock episodes and Correct. doing sort of our reporting based on that. Because early on, we watched them on CBS and found there wasn't a whole lot of differences. Some expected bleeping up curse words um, and some of the naughty language. Not too much. Well, I happened to flick on CBS at just the right time on Sunday night when of course you did. the scene was where um, right after Casey and they had hung the dead bodies the attackers Mm -hmm. in front of Malcolm Beck's uh, back porch or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And they're naked and there's a a knife in their chest that says return to sender. And they're very bloody and beaten. It is gruesome how they look. Mm -hmm. Well, on CBS, they cut to that scene and they pan over and they show the bodies face, upper part. They're bloody and they're beaten and they pan down and they show that note return to sender. But somehow... They drew underpants on the two men. <laughs> Wait, really? I- I'm not even kidding you. Yeah, they they somehow superimposed boxer briefs, I believe. I couldn't break out the brand, but they somehow superimposed a boxer brief on around each of the two men. Because that's where you draw the line. Like, you can show the blood and gore, <laughs> but you can't show a, a naked male hip or butt cheek. <laughs> Wait, that is – oh, my gosh. I would love to pick the brain of the production staff yes. of this. First off, oh, my gosh, what a pain in the rear end to have to go through and meticulously – you're like, oh, scene 52, you know, yep. hot cut, you know, 45 minutes, got to add pants to – you. gosh, that is tedious. But I am fascinated of, like, how does one do that? I am, Do you think that they – this is, like, a post-production thing or – 
Oh, yeah. Are they filming two scenes? Like the same no. scene? Post. Okay. They got to do that in post. They didn't bring everybody back or just think at that time, like, <laughs> we might have to censor this one day. Here, guys, Jim, Bill, put on these jockeys. Put on some shorts. <laughs> and go. Action. No, 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 no. I don't think so. <laughs> Interesting. Wait, so did you watch also the Beth scene on CBS? No, I got there the literally scene? just at that scene where the bodies were hanging. Oh, just at the one. Okay. I was watching something ahead of time. Um, my wife and I have been into watching old reruns of that sitcom Superstore on NBC. I don't know if you watch it, but like, we've been no. kind of vegging out on those a little bit. So I was watching that and I cut to... Actually, I was looking to see the football game, but I happened to go to CBS because I was watching something. Anyway, so I, I just got that scene and then I kind of moved on. So I didn't even go into episode eight at that point. Okay. But it makes me sort of wonder now. I almost want to go back and watch because there is a very, very steamy... Casey and Monica love scene. I would say this is their steamiest scene yet. I mean, Casey Musgraves is slow burns playing on the radio and they're hot <laughs> and they're sensual. And it showed like a butt, like her Kate and Monica's butt. Did they superimpose <laughs> a like a, a lacy <laughs> pair of underwear or like a, a thong or something on her just for that scene? Or how, how did they handle that? She was <laughs> staff. Staff at Tate, before Billy just keeps going here, I'm going to stop him. Staff at tasteofcountry.com. If you guys watch the CBS and you're listening to us talk about our Peacock version that we watched, let us know were there anything that you're like, oh, wait, we didn't see that. I'm, I'm curious because obviously I didn't, I didn't watch the CBS version. But yeah, did y'all see anything that might be different? Feel free to tell us because I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, I was full nudity in both of those scenes. Um, and maybe they even really truncated the Beth violence scene that we're referring to. Um, but given how they showed those bodies hanging, I'm guessing they probably mm -hmm. didn't. If they cut anything, they just maybe nipped the swear words. But I mean, two things you learn about Beth and Rip in this episode is this is where like badass Beth really starts to form here. Like you really see like yeah. she knows she's going to get the crap beat out of her. And she has the peace of mind, the sense to not only write off a text, but put something in her hand. And she kills the one dude. She's responsible for his death. Yeah. She stabs him twice in the heart. And he, but then Rip comes on. And the only thing it reminds me of is like that scene in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, where at the very end of the movie, like the army of the dead come off the boats. And it's like, <laughs> oh, hell yeah. And Rip just comes storming <laughs> through. He takes a bullet uh, to the chest and he's just like, boom, boom. Like John Wayne. And he just rips those guys apart. My gosh, is that, that was fantastic. Tears came to my eyes a little bit as I, as that, that scene happened. Here's the question, though. When John's saying, you know, no one will know about this, in my head I'm going, okay, th these are human beings, though. Like, at some point, isn't someone going to wonder where they are at? Like, I, I, someone, like Joe Schmo, a, a long-lost relative, yes. like, at some point, they're not showing up for Christmas dinner. Like, can you really, like, if I disappeared tomorrow, like, someone at some point, I mean, I sure hope, at some point, they're going to notice I'm missing. In some cases, I think Yellowstone explains that. Like when Fred gets taken to the train station, I think they refer mm -hmm. to him not having any friends and family. And later on, there's another character or two that dies. But like, in, for the most part, like um, th that's not the case. It, it, like like Jason, the uh, assistant who gets murdered. Like yeah. they kind of refer to like, what am I going to tell his family? But they don't really sort that out to anybody's satisfaction. Like if Jason's family has any sort of curiosity, why the body they got back is just beaten and bloodied and looks terrible. They'd launch an investigation. But if right. you get stuck on that plot hole with Yellowstone, you're really going to be in for you're not going to have a very good time because that is a big one that you just kind of have to <laughs> let them have just it. Not worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry about the like true logistics of how that would go down. It's that that is a true don't worry about it. It is. It, you know what this episode really kind of covers up? Episode seven, uh, as we focus on Beth, it, it covers up what's going on with Jamie, which is another really th important thing happening with the point. Like he's dang near going to take his own life before John mm -hmm. steps in. But like, this is literally like the third thing we're talking about. And I think in any other episode of Yellowstone, it'd certainly be number one because it's monumental. Right. Right. They just kind of threw that one under the rug. A little bit. Just because by episode eight, bit. he's on the road to redemption somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, well, yeah, he's much more uh, in episode seven, which I thought was interesting because in further seasons, we don't see this as much, but he's helping more out on the ranch and just different things that we hadn't seen 
prior. Yes. Yeah. His, his, um, white collar career gets back on track before too long, but I don't remember exactly how it happens. Like he gets out of the bunkhouse. He's not going to be shoveling horse manure for very long, for much longer, but I don't recall exactly how or why it happens. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to kind of watch that again. So to kind of tee up what we got coming here for the last, I guess we got two more episodes left for the season. Uh, cause there's episodes nine and 10. Nine and 10. Um, it's uh, the full on war against the Beck brothers. Now we have Dan Jenkins, Tom Rainwater and the Duttons all sort of aligned to take down the, the Beck brothers. Uh, there, there's quite a bit more drama that goes along with that. Uh, but that's really what we're, what we're targeting for there. Um, and in the last episode, so episode eight, we learn who is responsible for putting the alfalfa and the plane or the plane that carried the alfalfa. We learn who it's owned by. Right. Which I think as viewers, we kind of knew or suspected a little bit. Um, once we found out it wasn't Dan Jenkins, especially. Um, and There's Casey's going to go after that plane with Dan Jenkins security guard who will come back and be a, a pretty major character here in the next couple of episodes. Um, but I will say that that plot line, it leads to one of the biggest Yellowstone plot holes uh, uh -oh. or loose ends, as we call them. Hey, yeah, well, yeah, it really yeah, does. Yeah, You'll, yeah, notice yeah. It. <laughs> You'll notice it. It's not as inconsequential. Like we always bring up from um, the end of season three, lug them nut boy. Uh, but this is we more nothing, important. Billy. Yeah, me. <laughs> But this is more important than, than lug nut boy, I think, because it's kind of okay. like, oh, wait a minute. We were doing this over here. Whatever happened with that? Like, it's it's weird. Okay. Anything else? I mean, that's all I had for episode seven and eight. Anything else monumental that you want to chit chat about? Well, we could smiling. touch on. Well, no, I don't want to talk too much about Jimmy. I guess he continues to go after the meth bros. And that's a pretty interesting subplot line as well. Um but but we are seeing a lot of Casey and John Dutton bonding. That's obviously mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. uh, Monica is sort of approving of this with one arm and maybe one arm not so much. Correct. But Casey and Monica She's are. Up. Pardon? She's warming up a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. And it doesn't help that her and Casey right now are like in, I mean, it's like full heat together. And, and we see this like right. several, several seasons of Yellowstone's where they have these massive highs and lows in terms of the relationship. They hate each other, can't stand each other, won't talk toxic. to each other. And then it's like every other scene is a love scene between them. And I think we got a, one in each episode, if I'm not mistaken. So this is full on. I don't know. You said Monica is really bothering you. Is that why? Like because of that sort of roller coaster of emotions? Yeah. Or I'm just like... Uh... <laughs> You just never know what you're going to get. I just think the inconsistency to me is what's frustrating. But clearly Casey yeah. doesn't mind. He He's doing just fine with the roller coaster of emotions. <laughs> For me, that'd be like, oh, goodness gracious, I need some consistency here. That There's a tinge of uh, toxicness in that. <laughs> well, to, to quote my dad once when we were having a conversation, he knows who he married. <laughs> Hopefully dad's not listening to this or mom especially. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas is about to get awkward. <laughs> All I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> but <it does. laughs> but yeah, this this scene or this episode, these two episodes, Jimmy gets out of well, kind of. He gets out of debt with the meth bros. He pays them back. And then at the end, we're under the assumption that he fully pays them back by giving them the belt buckle, right? Like That's right. Yeah, they wanted a allegedly. little bit more money because Avery had hit them with the bear spray. And so yeah. he reluctantly gives the bell buckle. I will say that we're not done with these characters. Goodness. Um, yep, yeah, it, it kind of continues on from there in, in some pretty important ways. Um, and, and you just hate these guys. Like all the characters on Yellowstone. And this is why I think Yellowstone was such a great show in this in this time period. And he kind of contrasted to the show we're going to talk about in a few minutes uh, Bass Reeves, like each character was super interesting and you kind of cheered for him in a silo or you hated them in a silo. And Bass Reeves, we haven't seen that same kind of character development. I think while the show has been super interesting, it, it, it hasn't been as uh, sticky as, as Yellowstone. Uh, but yeah, Jimmy and the Meth Bros, more to come. Dang it. I'm kind of annoyed with them. 
Only because I just don't feel like they're adding major, other than just like they're adding another limb to the tree trunk of just drama. That's fair. That's fair. (laughs) What's the easiest choice you can make? Window instead of middle seat? Picking a vendor who sends a great gift basket? Outsourcing business tasks you hate? What about selling with Shopify? Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash try. Go to shopify.com slash try now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash try. Should we move into, before we move into Bass Reeves, I want to talk about our, our merch that we have, Billy, if you're, if you're down. I do. And in fact, I have one else. of the um, new items oh. in my hand. It's not a Yellowstone oh. related item, but I think fans How? of this podcast will appreciate it. How about that? Okay. Well, let me tell people what it is first before okay. we Vienna White this moment. Staff, I mean, not staff, staff at tasteofcountry.com first is where all of the trivia questions can be answered, comments, concerns, thoughts, all the good stuff. And tasteofcountrystore.com, y'all, is where we've got some swag. Not only do we have some Yellowstone paraphernalia, but we also have Billy. Drum roll, please. <laughs> you weren't ready for my Dolly Reba 24. We have a, uh, we had what? Wallen and, uh, yep. Who was it? Hardy. Hardy. Wallen and Hardy. Hardy. Uh, also similar vibes. Yeah, we have Yellowstone. We have that. We have another fun little graphic tea, tasteofcountrystore.com. If you aren't, if you're watching this video, we will be showing a little screen recording of the store. But if you're listening, head on over to our website and you can find it there. All good stuff. Hey, y'all, Christmas is coming around is all I can mm-hmm. say is good, good time to give some gifts. My shirt's a little bit wrinkly. It's because I actually wear it and it gets folded and put back into my dresser drawer and, uh, so that's the wrinkles. It's not one right off like the rack that I for display purposes only. No, it's over time. Mine is going to look a little bit faded. Although I put my Yellowstone and, shirt on after this weekend and fitting a little bit tight. <laughs> Being honest. Hey, you enjoy those mashed potatoes, that pumpkin <laughs> pie. Yo, I will say Billy is telling the truth. When I was in Nashville for CMA Awards, he was wearing one every single day. He was repping our, our team well. Yep. I know who pays the bills. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, they're also really great shirts. I'm still waiting on that trucker hat, but it's okay. I do I do like that. Oh, and they also we do we not only sell t-shirts, y'all, we sell sweatshirts. Yes. Which I just think is super fun. And hoodies specifically. Not just crew, it's not a crew neck, it's a hoodie. So definitely, like I said, tasteofcountrystore.com is where you can check that out. All right. Reeves. Let's talk Bass Reeves. I'm gonna give you the floor a little bit because I'm gonna be honest. And I'm sorry, anyone who really loves Bass Reeves, and they might be offended by, by what uh, – offended is not the correct word. Just disappointed, maybe. Billy, Bass Reeves is starting to bore me a little bit. I just feel like it's same song, second verse. Like, really, these two episodes were just, let's go catch some bad guys. Yeehaw, we got them. I mean, don't get me wrong. The storytelling and what I'm learning is really fascinating. I don't want to water that down. But – to what you just said earlier, yet again, I just am not – I'm not hooked yet – on a character other than I do really enjoy Billy. I'm not hooked on a like no character has really tugged at my heartstrings. I'm not left remembering stuff. Well, I think it's helpful here. If you think of Bass Reeves, not as sort of next in line of the Taylor Sheridan Yellowstone universe, but maybe compare it a little bit more closely to like a network television show, because these last episodes have been kind of serial episodes. You can bip in, you can bip out, you can watch an episode bring it to, to its conclusion in a satisfying way. And then, um, you know, you, you don't get wrapped up too much in sort of the long, bigger plot picture. Uh, we haven't had a lot of advancement in sort of the big picture plot with Bass Reeves with the last couple of episodes. Um, and, and it's also a little unfair that we're comparing it to Lioness in 1883 and 1923. Uh, those shows set a really, really high bar. Not every show that comes from Taylor Sheridan and this team 
is going to sort of reach that bar. From my personal mm-hmm. opinion, it hasn't met that bar yet, but it's certainly better than a show I'm going to watch on CBS or, or NBC or, or, or shows like that. So, so to, to give it that benefit of the doubt a little bit, um, yeah, it is what you're saying is true. It's a little slower and the characters haven't developed sort of to that point. We, we touched on that a little bit earlier as well. But I still find each episode in and of itself entertaining. Like I'm not finding myself wandering as much as I would watching, yeah. I don't know, NCIS or something like that. Uh, I don't know. Am I trying too hard to defend? A little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate I appreciate the thought the thought. I am gonna I, I am gonna move us on to talking about part five first. Or I, okay. do you wanna put let's put maybe part five and six together. If you're down. Well, no, just five came out. We I don't think six is available to the general oh. public. And I haven't watched it yet, so we can't do that yet. <laughs> yeah, never mind. I I've watched ahead. You got oh great. Oh, yeah, so you, let's talk about five. <laughs> you just don't you overachieve. No, no, don't spoil it yet now because I haven't watched five yet. Um, in part worry. five, it, Bass comes home after another successful yes. outlaw nabbing, and he's been on the road for 41 days, including Gosh, what happened in yeah. episode four. Mm-hmm. Within 24 hours, he's asked to go back out on the road. That does not sit well with Mrs. Reeves. Mm-hmm. Uh, his daughter is really getting smitten now with Arthur, and they go to the carnival together, Finally. which is apparently the, the big deal in town. And yeah. they have a little bit of a dust up that's raci- racially motivated or related with... Um, some other families in town and that turns yes. uh, one young man uh, takes exception with that. And there ends up being a big fight. This white kid tries to, has all sorts of racial slurs and ends up trying to beat up Arthur, Sally's boyfriend. She sticks up for him and together they kind of fight him off, <laughs> but you just got a feeling that that's going to come back at some point in the yeah. next episode or two. And then, totally. um, you know, Bath just kind of keeps doing what he's doing. He's very clever and he's very, virtuous in terms of doing his job properly. The one criminal that he's bringing in, he can clearly tell uh, the guy killed the man for all the right reasons, but he's still going to bring him to justice as far as we know. So it's more of a continuation of what we know about Bass Reeves, not so much any sort of deviations in his personality yet. I thought it was wild and I would love to know what $700 was back then, like equivalent to, or what it, sorry, what do it be now? Yeah. But he, for all the, you know, up until now, all his, you know, taking in these these um, bad guys is not is not the word I'm actually looking for. But uh, he was paid essentially a whopping seven hundred dollars, which for me I'm like, oh my gosh, that's nothing. But I feel like that's a lot, probably in comparison to like what seven hundred dollars would be today. So according to a website called In Twenty Thirteen Dollars. <laughs> Okay. $100 in 1886 is the equivalent of $3200 10 years ago. So multiply it by okay. multiply it by 32. What's 32 times 700? That's a lot of money, 30, right? 32 times 700 is 2200 Yeah, 22 Yeah, 22 not 2200, $22,400. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that's, that's that's, That's good nice. money for 41 days work. Um, a month and it's some not change. super money, but it's good money. Yeah. He's not a millionaire by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I thought what, the one what thing also, I'm, the, oh, nope, go ahead. I was reading my notes that I took. Well, I, I, I finally at the end of episode five, we get the return of a character that we met early on, and that's Barry Pepper's character, a man named Ace, Esau, Esau, Ace, I haven't heard how his name is pronounced yet. Pierce, he's the leader, leader of the first Cherokee Mounted Rifles. Um, this guy was sort of a good guy, bad guy. At first we met him, he kind of mm-hmm. warmed up to Bass, but then he definitely turned on him in a scene where he shot uh, a young boy that Bass had grown really uh, fond of while living in the uh, Indian Territory. So be really curious to see how they sort of interact. And from what I can tell, um, they're not friends moving on. That, that's the what the internet tells me. I liked the development of Billy in this this episode of you kind of see Bass tells him, you know, I don't think you you're going to be able to be a deputy marshal, but I'm not going to give up on you. Um, and just kind of I don't know. I, I didn't. I, he's being he's become a more fundamental character than I thought he might become. 
I'm not that fond of Billy. I know you really like really? him. Really? But he's I actually do. one of my least favorite characters. I don't like him because he's like a good guy. I just like his carry, like how, what he's adding. He's the one that's interesting in this entire thing, Billy. I don't think so. He's not interesting to okay. me. He's almost like a mascot. It's sort of what he feels like. Like he's like a, a boy working in a man's world. Like it's much more interesting to me when Dennis Quaid's character come on, comes on screen or even this Barry Pepper character. Like I'm much more captivated. And Billy just kind of weasels around a little bit. And I, it's just a matter of time, I feel like, before he's going to get his head blown off. I don't think he's going to get his head blown off. I think people like him. I'll tell you where I do smell heartbreak. <laughs> okay. Is the Arthur and Sally love story. I fear for Arthur's life at some point, and I have a feeling it's coming soon. You think she's going to break his heart? No, I think Arthur's going to die. I think he's going to get killed. Oh, you like think he's going to go? Oh. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> that wouldn't surprise me because look at 1883. I mean. Right. We got emotionally involved in that love story, and then that w was crushing. So that that's, that fits. And we know history tells us who Sally actually grows up and marries, and the man's name is not Arthur. So Such a fun sucker. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm hedging a little bit. I do like the Arthur character quite a bit, and I like Sally a lot. Um, but don't get too attached. And Bass is growing on me. I know he's not like a fun guy, but it's going to surprise you. There was a scene here with Bass Reeves that I actually thought was really, really funny. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, can you explain to me? Nothing of this episode was I watching going, oh, no, no. Do, do good, Bassy. I had I had a real LOL right right during oh, no. the episode here. And, and, you know, through this, we kind of continue to learn of Bass's virtuosity. And we also learn that, above all, he's a man. And when he gets home, knowing that he's got to get going again in like 24 hours and he is going to get <laughs> hell for it been 41 days he does the thing that I men do he does not tell his wife until after they roll around because he knows there's no way that they're going to get a chance to make baby number six if he tells her before By and i'm not way. sure i've related to this show as much as i have at that <laughs> moment like his timing was spot on she's going to give him hell and she's going to be ticked about his order but he's going to be gone again so he did what he had to do <laughs> I'm not Billy's saying I applaud you, Bass. Bass. On the back. I relate. I relate to you, your order of events <laughs> there. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Now I see why you were chuckling. That was funny. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of like, oh, that's just Bass being Bass. Bass, man doing what a man does right there. <laughs> Sorry for you, Mrs. <laughs> Madam. <laughs> oh, I was, I, I was even kind of laughing in the moment, too. I'm like, oh, you didn't tell her, did he? That old sly dog. Your wife was probably watching like, mm, yeah, I know this trick one too many times. <laughs> yeah, she was she was all ticked and I'm, she's like, are you laughing? No, no, no. I was just. <laughs> just, uh, just mm, God, what a jerk. <laughs> no, my, my wife does not watch this show with me. This is uh, she. Uh, like I mentioned before, we're watching Superstore. That's about at her level. I got her to watch 1883 with me, but yeah, I don't did. know if I can get her on another one. Yeah, you did get her to watch 1883. I remember that. <laughs> it was a, it was a, it was tough tough to do. It was, <laughs> Honey, we need some bonding time. Watch 1883 with me. <laughs> it was like pulling a wagon without wheels. Forced couple bonding. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Alrighty, well I'm down for Q and A if you are, unless you have more on our our. our well, boy let's hit bass. trivia first. Oh, sorry. Yes. Okay. Remind. Oh, gosh, it's been a hot. Gosh, we've had Thanksgiving. That tryptophan has hit in since that turkey. Tell me, remind me what trivia was. I don't even remember the question. Trivia. Uh, in a flash, this is, has to do with um, a Yellowstone episode from okay. maybe episode five or six. I can't remember exactly which one, but it was a flashback scene. And we saw a, a cowboy beating Rip with a spoon, shouting, little orphan boy, little orphan boy. And the fight is interrupted by a young Lloyd. Oh, yeah. Who plays young Lloyd? You said you knew. Do you remember? Yeah. It's Forey J. Smith's son. Forey J. Smith's real life son, whose name is yeah. Forrest Smith. I couldn't remember. And that. Joseph knew the answer to this question. He mailed correctly hey, at staff Joe. at tasteofcountry.com. 
And he knew it was indeed Forrest Smith. So he is this week's trivia winner. And for, uh, Forrest, congratulations. You know what we should do, Wait, Edison? You mean Joseph? Joseph? Joseph, you yeah. You said Forrest. We got to figure out a way to get these T-shirts to our prize winners. Not this one here. Oh, yeah. But the Yellow Zone T-shirt winner. <gasps> Wait, that's cool. I like that idea. I mean, my praise and adulation is probably really means a lot, but a t-shirt probably really seals the deal a little bit there, I think. A t-shirt's more fun. It's like something tangible. I always love gifts and prizes. I mean, affirmation goes a long way, but dude, if we can give out <laughs> gifts and prizes, I'm here for this. Joseph, well done. We, uh, You are a superstar, but I'm going to try to figure out a way to get the next winner a, a t-shirt. Um, and maybe Joseph too, Wait, but realistically, it's going to take several weeks. The wheels move slowly. Over yeah, here. <laughs> well, that that is true. But wait a minute, Billy. We didn't give give Joseph a better uh, affirmation. You just said, "Congrats, oh. bro!" Essentially, give him better. Get, we we don't half ass stuff here. Come on, GI Joe. This one's for you, buddy. Congratulations. <laughs> this is your day. This is your week. As the year wraps up, finish strong. You've been a car riding in fourth <laughs> gear, unaware of this fifth and sixth gear you have in your life. Put the clutch down, my friend, and hammer it at home. There's big prizes and money to be won out there and all that kind of things. Joseph, congratulations. You're welcome, Joseph. Billy was just going to just keep going on there. I was like, excuse me, that is not what we are known for at the Dutton Rolls podcast. Mm -mm. Oh, Joseph, <laughs> now known as G.I. Joe. All righty, Q&A first one. I have two for us today. The first one's from Johnny who says, you two can rewatch 1923 for clarification, but if memory serves, there are no hints that Alex is pregnant at season one's conclusion. Fans seem to be hoping that Alex and Spencer are John Dutton Jr.'s, Costner's character's dad's, parents. All I think right, but I thought I remember Alex getting a little sick. Or like a seasickness. I think we alluded she does. I think if I remember, she does get sick. But I th I do think it was us alluding. Actually, it was probably Addison alluding. Let's be real. Um, I was looking for any, you know, little Easter eggs possible. Yeah, I he says fans seem to be hoping. And I think that's really kind of underselling it. Like, I think we are. <laughs> Full launching, we are really launching. hoping <laughs> that that's the case. Yeah, we are. Well, I think part of that is because Beth and Alex seem to be cut from the same cloth to a certain degree. Yeah. No? Or Beth and Spencer almost seem to be cut from the same yeah. cloth. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, that, that's, you have no memory of 1923, do you? Oh, I remember Spencer, Billy. We don't have to keep going over this. <laughs> right. Well, no, but I, I, I think there was a little bit of hint to sort of push back a little bit on what Johnny has to say here, but he's right. It's a little bit more uh, conjecture and hope than it is actual proof at this point. Our next one's from LG on YouTube who says, without spoiling anything, the scene Billy refers to should have by itself worn one Kelly and Emmy. Billy, remind me. Oh, no, we weren't expressing the scene yet, right? Well, no, we, we, he, this is, has, we were talking about it last episode and I had sort of teed up the Beth Dutton scene that played out in episode seven, the very violent scene where she's attacked. Oh. And he's saying that should have won Kelly, Riley, and Emmy. And gotcha. I, I, I don't disagree with, with uh, LG here on this one. I think from seasons two and three, especially Yellowstone as a show, it, it was a crying shame that they, they didn't get any, um, tangible hardware out of those like the show was was in large part the acting was in large part ignored and um that was really unfortunate i think uh, it's not till season four really where we start getting some hardware issued for this show and i don't believe any of them have won an emmy uh, which is a bummer because this is a um, great surprised by that i am surprised by that yeah um and I'm going to make that this week's trivia question, if I could. I know we kind of skipped by it, but I'm going to ask, what is the first acting-related award that a member of the cast of Yellowstone won? What, who was the actor or actress, and what was the award? And then it could be an Emmy. It could be a Golden Globe or, um, or, or something along those lines. Yeah. Uh, just let me know. Staff at tasteofcountry.com, the first person to win it. 
And if there was two in the same year, I'll take either one of them. I, uh, yeah, I actually, I don't know this one. I'm excited to find out next week though. Well, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't either. I, um, I haven't looked oh. up the answer yet. <laughs> I suspect I know uh -huh. and it's a little disappointing, but, um, I'm gonna have to do a little research here before we come back and, uh, either give some adulation or a t-shirt away to somebody. As always outside of staff at tasteofcountry.com where you can leave your trivia thoughts, comments, corrections. Uh, we always greatly appreciate sub subscribing to our YouTube channel. That's where all the videos live, but also leave us a good old rating and review on Apple podcast and a rating on Spotify and share it with a friend or even, you know, we're headed into the holidays. We just finished Thanksgiving, but Christmas is upon us. If you are looking for something to do with those relatives, just turn one of our episodes on. That's fun. Right? <laughs> I couldn't imagine listening to a podcast with somebody. It's a solo experience. Like, everybody gather around. It's like an old-timey radio. Like, I mean, I want people to listen, too, but I, let's be realistic here. We're not going to get grandma, grandpa, and the whole family around to watch our faces. There's more okay, interesting well, programming out there than just watching us talk. As you're driving to your relative's home, Billy, I just drove I just drove to Lubbock, which was a solid, you know, seven hours. My brother and I listened to a financial uh, podcast, multiple all the way there. So... Yeah. <laughs> my point is we could have flipped we could have gone through a few Dutton rules but you know I'm the sister it's not as cool do we really want to listen to Addison on a podcast nah seven hours of financial okay. podcasts yeah well we listened to some some George Strait too we we played some Texas country <laughs> but <laughs> we played some Texas country and I I did learn we played the journal as well with the journal and then some financial podcasts Okay. That's what we listen to. Yeah. See, maybe your <laughs> other brother drives next time. That's all I'm saying. Maybe you hitch a ride with mom or dad to see what they're up to. <laughs> nope. I think I'm going to stay with that. I think I would rather listen to some financial podcasts and drive with mom for seven hours. Oh, okay, Love Shelly. Love Shelly dearly. Oh. But well, look I, at that. I think so we, we both insulted our mothers this podcast. <laughs> Hurrah! <laughs> And on that note, I think I'm going to wrap us up. <laughs> As always, Yellowstone Dutton Rules Podcast is another spicy Town Square Media Podcast. Spicy and insulting. <laughs> and insulting. <laughs>